It is among the most storied rivalries in college football. Since 1892, Auburn and Georgia have crisscrossed the state line to square off 99 times in what is the Deep South's longest-running football showdown. Jim Donnan is in his first year as head coach at Georgia. His Bulldogs hope to be stubborn opposition as they invade the Eye of the Eagle in Auburn. The Tigers are making a late-season push for the SEC West title, and in this historic 100th clash would like nothing more than to lay a huge paw print all over them dogs. It's Georgia and Auburn next on CBS Sports. As we mentioned, the 100th meeting, Auburn with a slight edge all time in the rivalry, 47, 44, and 8. But in 99 games, the total points between these two separated by just 15 points. It was a six-point win for Auburn in Athens last year. Georgia won the toss and elected to defer. They're playing this game under ideal conditions, 53 degrees, sunny skies. Breeze out of the east at 14 miles per hour. Natural grass field. Max Langley has his kickoff go out of bounds. So a bad way to start for Georgia as Auburn will begin with great field position at the 35-yard line. Led by the junior from Pritchard, Alabama, Damian Craig. His first season as starter. He's third in the SEC in total offense. Behind only... Standout quarterbacks Danny Werfel of Florida and Peyton Manning of Tennessee. Sean, they're going to start with their four wide receiver. This is their up-tempo offense. Damian Craig's favorite formation they have. They'll play smash mouth football. They'll spread the field. They like to spread the field to start the game. Craig with a lot of time going to caught in Georgia territory. First down out of bounds at the 45-yard line. The catch made by Tyrone Goodson. Alanda Sims knocked him out of bounds. Auburn will also use the no huddle. And a quick look at the Tiger backs and receivers. Williams and McLeod in the backfield. Bailey, Goodson, and Baker when they're the three wide receiver sets. Up front, James, Riley, Tiger, Thomas, and Rowe. Yes means split, the T means tight among the offensive line for Auburn. From the Georgia 45, Rusty Williams, the redshirt freshman tailback, down to the 42-yard line, tackled by Brandon Talbert. Now Georgia on defense, Paul Snellings, Jason Ferguson, Jermaine Smith, and Derek Bird, the front four. Greg Bright, second leading tackler in the SEC with Talbert and Jones at linebacker. And in the secondary of Glenn Ford, Alanda Sims, Corey Johnson, and Ronald Bailey. Johnson, the leader of that secondary at free safety. On second and seven, the toss to Williams. First down, down to the 30-yard line, tackled by Talbert and Bright. You know, Terry Bowden will love to throw the football, but few people know he'd rather play smash mouth football. This is their favorite play, toss sweep. Number 43, Kevin McLeod, the fullback, gets a good seal block. Rusty Williams gets on the corner. And so far, first three plays, three wides and four wides, one pass, two throws. Very effective offense. And they move very quickly from their own 35 to the Georgia 30. In just over a minute. Three wide receivers again. Craig in the flat for Goodson. Couple of nice moves. He's close to another first down on the 20-yard line. It's a deep receiving core for Auburn, but Tommy Bowden, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday Goodson is playing the best football among those wide receivers. Yeah, he has really stepped it up this year. Among those 32 catches, he had 10 against Mississippi State for 145 yards and two touchdowns. And as you can see, they're in their hurry-up offense. No huddle. Won't allow Georgia to get any defensive substitutions on the field. Georgia defensive coordinator Joe Kynes told us really he expected this. And his team should be prepared to face the no huddle. Second and less than a yard. Craig 
Berg took a pretty good pop, but appeared to pick up the first down. It was Derek Bird who delivered the hit. 23 touchdowns in 36 tries inside the 20. They scored on 29 of 36 possessions in the red zone, and they're inside the red zone by the length of the football with a first down. Three wide receivers, two backs, no tight end in the game. This is power football or drop back pass for them. Bill McLeod and fullback. Williams the tailback, and he gets hit for a loss. Busting through is Derek Bird, the defensive end, number 91, the junior from Box Springs, Georgia. Bird does a nice job reading the pulling guard and tackle on the counter tray and closing down the line of scrimmage. Four wide receivers now as Willie Gauthier has come onto the field for Auburn. And it took the fullback Kevin McLeod out of the game. Craig with one on one coverage to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Robert Baker. <laughs> What great lead block by the tailback Rusty Williams to cut down the end and give Damian Craig a great look, and then Craig just dropped it over the shoulder. Just a great, great offensive play. Jared Holmes on to attempt the extra point. It is good. Great start for Terry Bowden and the Auburn Tigers coming off a lackluster win last week. There's Rusty right there. Rusty Williams with the cut block. That gives Craig unimpeded vision, makes his job easier as Baker runs away from the defensive coverage of Ford. Isolate up top. He's got about a step of separation, but look where the ball's thrown. Right to the corner, right at Ugga. And watch Baker. He almost gets bit by Ugga. <laughs> Get away from me, man. <laughs> Tough enough to score without Uga biting me. Terrific start for the Auburn Tigers. An impressive opening drive, and they lead 7 to nothing. Home with a low kick, fielded by Lenny Upman. Chris Terry, back up defensive tackle, and he ran it out to the 35-yard line. So good field position with which to begin for the Georgia offense. The Georgia defense might want to consider <laughs> dressing Ugga. They went right after Robert Baker after the touchdown. <laughs> we talked about the fierce rivalry. Ugga has his game face on early. Ugga was a little more feisty than the Georgia defense in that first series. I'll tell you, it's one of the classic mascots in all of college football. That's Ugga five. Ugga's a part of Georgia athletics for 40 years. First down, it's the true freshman Patrick pass, and he is thrown down for a loss by Martavius Houston. The strong safety up for his seventh tackle for a loss this year. That's a team high. Brian Smith makes his first start of the year for Georgia, just his fourth career start. He's a senior in his fifth year of the program from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Limited physically, but one of the smarter quarterbacks you'll see anywhere in the country. He's into the game to cut down to the turnovers. Swing pass to Hines Ward. Big part of the Georgia game plan today to get the ball into the hands of Ward. He was pushed out by Takeo Spikes, and as you see, a late flag came flying in. Pass for Edwards at tailback, Callaway the fullback, Ward and Daniels the wideouts, Larry Brown the tight end. Up front, the strength of the offensive line, the tackles, Meadows and Stinchcomb with Beatles and Fleming the guards. Stafford is the center. Five-yard face mask added to the end of the run. And the Bulldogs have a first down at their own 45-yard line. Quickly the other way to Hines Ward with some running run. In Auburn territory and down at the 37-yard line. Well, Coach Donnett said yesterday we haven't done a good job of getting it to Ward the last couple of weeks, and obviously they're <laughs> determined to get it to him early today. 
Second consecutive play. They get the ball very quickly to Hines Ward. Watch him miss, make number four. Jason Bray miss a tackle. Same thing happened on the other sideline. Hines Ward is one of the quickest athletes in the country. May not be the fastest in a 40-yard dash time, but one of the quickest you'll see anywhere in the country. Gain of 18 on that play. Draw the pass. He has a big hole. And is tripped up just shy of the 30-yard line by Takeo Spikes. Spikes, the best player on that Auburn defense. Up front, Jimmy Brumbaugh, Ezell Powell, and Leonardo Carson. Spikes, a semifinalist for the Butkus Award, Ricky Neal, Quinton Reese, and Marcellus Mostella, the rest of the linebacking core. Bray, Houston, Ware, and Creighton in a very young secondary for Auburn. Second and five, pass. That's it as he crossed the 30, down to the 29, shy of a first down. He took a hit from Brad Ware, a true freshman at free safety. Creighton, the cornerback, is a true freshman. Bray and Houston, the other members of the starting secondary for Auburn, are sophomores. It's almost redundant with Auburn's defense when you start talking about how young they are, because as we said in the top, nine of the 11 starters are either true freshmen or true sophomores, and Sean, in all my years, I'm not sure I've ever, ever seen that. And it's a defense that's played pretty well. In fact, they lead the nation in interceptions of the Auburn defense. Third down and two. Two tight ends into the game. Pass. As a first down, and he got pushed forward by the tackler. Down to the 22-yard line. So an impressive opening drive by George's. Jim Donnan's team tries to answer the touchdown drive of Auburn. You see him covering his face. There's a report going around the conference that the Auburn coaches have somebody in the coaches box with binoculars trying to read the lips of the opposing team's coaches on the sideline trying to steal the play. So Jim Donnan is guarding against that today. And I'm not sure I buy into it, but there's a guy up there with binoculars. Pass out of bounds of the 20-yard line. Takeo Spikes made the tackle. There's the Auburn coaches booth. There, brother Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator right there, one of the most experienced assistant coaches anywhere in the SEC, been in Alabama, been at Auburn, and his defenses have one thing in common throughout his career, they get to the football. They, all, they lead the country in interceptions. He's a very special coach. Didn't detect anybody up there with binoculars trying to steal yeah, I'm, the play. I'm really not buying into that. A lot of people have binoculars anyway, like the guy next to us. They flip it to Ward, he's in trouble. Got away from Brady behind the line of scrimmage. Now he's no longer in trouble. And out of bounds, very close to a first down near the 12-yard line. That right there is why he's so special. The ability to make people miss in the open field. Marcellus Mostella does a great job. Keep Look at him, he's got contained. Can't make the tackle, and instead of minus seven, reads the block of his tight end, Larry Brown, and almost picks up a first down. Just a great athlete. Third down and less than a yard. Ward now the split end. He's played quarterback and tailback. There's some talk that he might play quarterback this week, but it did not happen. Smith engineering the drive, mostly on the ground. Pass. Lunges ahead and has the first down. Needed to reach the 11. He got near the 10. Auburn leads 7 0. Nearly five and a half minutes played, but Georgia is on the move most impressively. They've had a tough time in the first quarter. They've only scored 14 points this season in the opening 15 minutes, and all 14 of those points were in the game against Mississippi State, a Georgia win. Well, Jim Don is not taking any chances today with that rumor. He's, he's covering his mouth every play he sends out there. And you can see him look almost as if he was pointing up to the press box across the way and telling his assistants, be careful. He had that from a very good source. Pass. With running room inside the five, lunging for the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Doing a great job making Jim Dunn and look smart today. 
avoiding putting the football on the ground. Jim Donnan told me on the field before the game, this guy's the real deal. Looking for him stretch. He runs over the free safety, Brad Ware, stretches for the end zone. Touchdown. His second collegiate touchdown is a true freshman from Tucker, Georgia. Pat Hines adds the extra point. Auburn and Georgia tied at seven. Auburn's offense built a commanding lead over Georgia in the early going with touchdowns by Robert Baker, Rusty Williams, and Karsten Bailey that made the score 28-7 Tigers. We rejoin the action as Auburn has the ball third down on their own 15-yard line with 2 minutes 32 seconds remaining in the second quarter here on ESPN Classic. Big play for the Georgia defense. They'd like to get back into the game with a score before the half. Quarterback draw. Craig, great run. Football! Ball free. Recovered by Georgia at the 34. It's Champ Bailey who came up with the football. Great break for the Bulldogs. Here's the team with the best turnover margin in the SEC turning it over in a critical situation. I like the call. Quarterback draw. They spread the field. Look at the ability in the open field. Now put the ball away, Damian. Good strip right there by Corey Johnson. And Champ Bailey, the true freshman, jumps on it. Put the ball away. Good strip by Johnson. Ball's on the turf. Champ Bailey. 2.23 left in the half. Two timeouts left for Georgia. They have plenty of time in business at the 34-yard line of Auburn. Edwards at... Rather, Odell Collins a tailback, and he's close to a first down at the 25-yard line. Collins a powerful tailback at 6'3", 240 pounds. He put up huge numbers in two years at junior college at Merced in California, but hasn't been able to get started in his two years at Georgia. They give him the ball running the other way, and he has the first down to the 22. Minute 48 left. The clock stopped as they moved the chain. Plenty of time for the Georgia offense with two timeouts left. Here's a situation where Jim Donnan's got to make sure he gets the plays in quickly. Mike Bobo's a veteran guy. Use your timeouts correctly, but you've got to get seven. He can't settle for three here. Collins to the right. Down to the 19-yard line. Takeo Spikes made the tackle. Collins in two years at Merced Junior College. Rushed for over 3,500 yards. Led the nation in rushing. Had more than 500 carries in each of his two years. No player in the history of college football has done that. They only had 20 carries in two years at Georgia prior to today. Curtsy replaces him behind Bobo. Bobo dumps it off for Kurtzy. Kurtzy down at the 15-yard line. 58 seconds left, and Georgia will use a timeout. Mike Bobo, a coach's son, accepted his demotion to second string for this game gracefully. He knows he has not played very well. Third down, a long three. Curtsy the long back. Four wide receivers in the game. Movement and a flag down. Looked like Auburn was offside. Daniels inside the 10, inside the 5. And out of bounds with a first down if the play stands. It did look like it was Auburn, which was offside. Bray pushed. Daniels out of bounds. Offside, defense, decline. First down. First and goal for Georgia just outside the Auburn two. First and goal inside the three yard line. With one timeout remaining, you've got a dilemma. You've got to make sure that if you don't get in on this series, you've got a second play call. Selma Callaway, the fullback. Curtsy, the tailback. The fake to Curtsy. Bobo did well just to get rid of it. An incomplete pass as Quentin Reese 
had Bobo wrapped up back at the 10. S Selma Callaway, the fullback, was so wide open on the play action, and he's the first read for Bobo. Bobo predetermined where he was going instead of reading the defense. Watch what happens when he comes off the fake. Good job. They get keep everybody inside. They see the fake. Callaway was wide open in the end zone. They pitch it to Curtsy. Touchdown. Tough run by Torrin Curtsy. And Georgia's in the end zone again. Critical, critical turnover by Damian Craig and then the ensuing drive by Georgia taking advantage of the opportunity, cutting the lead in half should the extra point be good. Officially a two-yard run. Kurtzie ran over Brad Ware, the safety. Half Hines adds the extra point. First touchdown of the season for Torin Kurtzie, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Talented kid, a little change of pace, has a little more uh, wiggle than the other tailbacks. Good cut. Now he gets north and south and runs right over the freshman safety, Brad Ware. What I like is he had the wiggle outside, but then he got the shoulders underneath Ware and strong enough to get in the end zone. 34 yards after the Craig fumble. And the touchdown the first of the year by Kurtzen. Robert Baker waiting for the kickoff from Dax Langley. 28-14 Auburn. 37 seconds left in the half. One timeout left for each team. Auburn has been penalized six times for 52 yards. And they've turned it over once now. Morrow. He turns it to the 32-yard line. And was tackled there by Kirby Smart. Now, at this point, with 29 seconds left and a 14-point lead, Terry Bowden has to decide whether or not you take a shot here, and, and I'm not sure you do. Last series, you made a mistake, and you let him back in the game. I think at this point, you just get into the locker room. Get a drink, right, Terry? Yeah. Well, have a glass of water and chat about it. Kevin McLeod, the fullback. Marquis Cooper, the tailback. They stay on the ground with Cooper, and he got hit right at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like Auburn will be content with a two-touchdown lead at intermission. Jason Ferguson and Jermaine Smith combined on the stop. Well, plenty of excitement, as you expect, when these two longtime rivals get together. That's the end of the first half with the score. Auburn 28 and Georgia 14. We pick up the action at the start of the fourth quarter with Auburn still leading 28-14 on ESPN Classic. Well, apparently business is not very brisk at the hot dog stand at the moment. <laughs> Man's all captivated by the football game. Auburn leading by 14 with one quarter to play. Second and short, Robert Edwards ahead for the first down. Tackled by Martavius Houston, the gain out to the 33-yard line, first and 10, Georgia. They've been out gained by nearly 2-1 to one to this point. And the time of possession, more than 10 minutes in favor of Auburn through three quarters. But the Tigers' lead is only 14. Mike Bobo still bouncing back from a fractured leg last season. He throws deep. Caught. Hines Ward. Great move. Hines Ward will score. Touchdown, Georgia. What did we just say about a recipe for disaster? You let him hang around, you let him hang around, and the big play guy makes a big play. Runs a post pattern. No help from the safety inside, and just a great job by Bobo. Sixty-seven yards, third touchdown reception of the season for the junior Hines Ward, and the extra point is good off the foot of Hap Hines. Ward at the top of your screen, working against Dan Evans, who didn't start today. The safety runs over the top and misses the tackle. 
If you're the safety, Brad Ware, you cannot overrun it. That's a knockout shot. It's a seven-point game in Auburn, Alabama. Craig hands off to Cooper. And Ramon Cooper, no relation, made the tackle. It joined us late. Auburn scored on its opening drive, a 21-yard touchdown pass to Baker. Then pass, who was injured on Georgia's opening drive, scored an 11-yard touchdown run. Robert Baker with a second catch made it 14-7. This is second down and five with Cooper in the back lined up to the right of the quarterback, Damian Craig. Again, all day to throw, going deep too high. Looking for Willie Gaucher. Corey Johnson had the coverage. The Auburn lead grew to 21 to seven on a seven yard touchdown run by Rusty Williams. Karsten Bailey's catch made it 28 seven. Then a big fumble just before halftime. Georgia took advantage and scored on a curtsy two-yard run. There was no scoring in the third quarter, and then the touchdown a moment ago. Bobo to Hines Ward. It's a young Auburn team now dealing with momentum shift. We'll see how they respond. Craig with all day to throw. He throws short. And two receivers side by side. That was likely a mistake. It was Baker and Goodson in the neighborhood. Let's check in with Pat O'Brien. Thank you, Pat. Here it's Georgia looking for a come from behind win over Auburn. They were down by 21. They trail by seven. They'll get it back after this punt. Chris McCraney. In reverse, tried to hand it off and did. Very dangerous play. Fortunately for the Bulldogs, Champ Bailey held on to the ball. The Bulldogs begin at their own 30 after this. Welcome back. There's 8 minutes 55 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter and the score 28-21, Tigers over the Bulldogs. Auburn leads 28-21, 8.55 remaining. First and 10, Georgia at its own 23. Mike Bobo has his tight end. Lots of running room for Brown out across the 40. And out of bounds at the 43-yard line, tackled by Takeo Spikes. Wynton Reese also into the stop for Auburn. Talked about how they're utilizing that tight end more often in their possession offense. Brown's right here. He's going to slow block. Faked. Now here he goes. Just releases out into the flat. Bobo with a nice job. You move the chain. Brown slow to get up on the play. Face down on the Auburn sideline. The engine going to player. Number 87, Larry Brown. See what happens at the end. Spikes is going to come Ooh. in with a good hit. Helmet to helmet. That's a heavy thud right there. Heavy collision. So much talk in football these days about concussions, the recent problems with Steve Young. And that's how you come up with a concussion when you take that kind of a blow in the head. Yep. Now his backup is Michael Taylor, who doesn't have a catch this season for Georgia. So you've got a guy like Brown who's stepping it up each week, getting better as a receiver. It would really hurt their pass offense not to have him for the rest of the game. I mentioned Brown. Asked Tubby Smith if he could try out for the basketball team last year when the football season ended. There's Taylor, his backup on the sideline. Brown made the basketball team. Didn't play much, but then in that Sweet 16 game against Syracuse, the memorable overtime game, Brown played 10 minutes and had four rebounds. Scored two points. And George has lost to Syracuse. Ball at the 43-yard line. No tight end of the game with three wide receivers on the field for Jim Donnan. Bobo throws over the middle. Top. Running room again for Hines Ward. Hines Ward inside the 30. Out of bounds inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. You can't say enough about Hines Ward, but that time Mike Bobo did a nice job under pressure staying in and delivering the football. 
Good pressure by Auburn. From the right side, Charles Dorsey, but Bobo hangs in, delivers the football, and then it's Hines Ward at his best. I don't know what he runs a 40 in, but I'll tell you what, he's as quick as anybody out there in college football. 145 yards receiving on seven grabs for Ward. Ball just inside the 20. Ward catching his breath on the sideline. Back to the run with Robert Edwards. He gets very little. Gain of two to the 18. Jimmy Brumbaugh, the nose guard, made the tackle. The sophomore from Keystone Heights, Florida. Look at Robert Edwards. You have to be thinking about hanging on to the football. <laughs> He's dropped the ball 11 times this year, lost four of them. But at this point, Sean, you would think with Hines Ward running the football the way he has, catching the football the way he has, you think Jim Donnan has something up his sleeve? The former quarterback might throw the football any time now. They certainly seem to be set up for that if they choose to go to it. Under eight minutes remaining. Bobo in trouble and sacked. Leonardo Carson. Dumped him back at the 26-yard line. A huge play. Leonardo Carson, defensive end, number 95. Bottom of, of your screen comes real hard. Late block attempt there by the center. Brad Stafford did not get back in position quickly enough, and that's a big play. Loss of eight. Third and 17. Georgia needs to hurry to the line of scrimmage. Play clock at two. One. And they just did get it off. Bobo throws. Well short of the first down and drops. Tony Small, the intended target. Fourth down. Field goal unit coming on as we check in with Pat O'Brien. And Syracuse riding the undefeated streak since dropping its two, first two of the year. Here's Hap Hines. 43-yard try. It is no good. He missed it wide to the left. seven-point game with 6.58 remaining. Now, Hines is five for six this year with a long of 54. He's got plenty of distance, just comes across the top of it, pulls it a little bit. And Jim Donnan... Uh, oh, man. He's a freshman, half Hines. And now movement. Coming across was Ferguson. Was he drawn off? Cap Hines says he really doesn't care much about pressure. Offside. There defense. was another offside penalty against Georgia. First down. Cap Hines says his father faces pressure every day. His dad, Harris First Hines, is a Supreme Court judge in the state of Georgia. He says, my dad has to decide whether or not people get the death penalty. So kicking a field goal doesn't seem like... There's that much pressure involved when you have to face that decision. That's true, but Dad's not doing it in front of 85,000 people. <laughs> well, usually only one who has a very serious interest. First and five. Easily short of the first down at the 35. Auburn has not been penalized here in the second half after a very sloppy first half in which they drew a flag on six occasions. It's interesting, though, in the second half, they're in two-back, eye formation, pound the football a lot more than they were in the first half when there were four wides going up and down the field with Damian Craig. Kind of pulled their horns in a little bit. Yeah, the second half. Well, trying to sit on the lead. Second and two. Easily hit and driven back. Jason Ferguson stood him up. Ferguson's a physical guy, 6'5", 305. Really a strength of this team right up front are their two defensive tackles. And Ferguson, watch him make the move. He's double teamed, keeps moving. Gain one on the play, third and one at the 35. 
Ferguson and Talbert. So after first and five, it's third down and one. And they stop it. Wow. Beasley hit behind the line of scrimmage. Greg Bright with a huge play. So you'd think on first and five, Auburn would have been able to take advantage and pick up one first down. But the Tigers do not, and they'll be forced to punt it right back. Where was this Georgia defense in the first half? They're just stuffing Auburn. Greg Bright, the middle linebacker, big play. And Georgia will get the ball back with good field position. As Holmes is punting into a 15-mile-per-hour breeze. This McCraney waiting for the punt. Short end over end punt. It takes a good bounce for Auburn. Catch the football. You know it's against the wind, Chris. Move up, right? One would suspect that would be the thought process. They down it right on the 20. 80 yards to go for the Bulldogs for the tying score. ESPN Classic. Mike Bobo came off the bench in the first half. He has helped to lead the comeback. Hines Ward has had an enormous day. Daniels the motion man. Bobo in trouble throws and it is caught. Corey Allen, a terrific catch. He had to spin with the ball behind him. First down, George at the 35. Allen tried to atone for that drop ball on the last drive. That was a huge play, and Bobo got belted by Mostella. Now, they've been running this little quick screen to Ward all day, so they fake it. They get everybody flying up, and that's why the receiver comes open late, because everybody wants to fly up and get a piece. Now, watch what happens to Bobo. He stayed in and took a hit last time. Watch him again. Bang! Mike Bobo is doing a great job so far. And the line gave him a lot of time to execute that well-conceived play. Pass is incomplete. Thrown short of Tony Small, sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida, who has only one catch for the year. Tony should have had two. They've thrown to him on a couple of occasions here in the fourth quarter. 4.22 left. Each team with three timeouts left. Auburn leads by seven. They joined us late. They led, the, they led by 21 at 28 to 7. Second and 10, the dogs at their own 35. Bobo dumps it short for Edwards. Edwards very close to a first down. At the 45-yard line, Ricky Neal and Martavius Houston, the tacklers. And... Uh, the officials deem it is third down and less than a yard. Under four minutes left. Situation here, you've got to get the first down. Only a few inches for a first down, so just get in there, quarterback sneak, and go. That's the play. The result is a first down. Out to the 47-yard line. Clock stopped to move the chains with 3.43 left. Plenty of time remaining. Jim Donnan, first year, George after six at Marshall. He won 64 games in six years there, including a national championship, two-time Division I AA Coach of the Year. And enjoying a roller coaster ride in his first season at Georgia. Today's game a microcosm of that. Pass drops. Corey Allen, his second big drop here in the fourth quarter, and almost the same spot as the last one. No, I don't get it. They played so well coming in and closing the gap, but since they got within seven, two drop passes by Corey Allen. Both of them hit him right between the eight and the zero. They jumped off sides on fourth and one. They've had some critical breakdowns late in the tight ball game. You've got to make those plays. Would have been a first down in Auburn territory and set at second and ten. Edwards the lone back. Four-man rush, short drop, Allen, did he catch that one? Juggled it, but apparently held on at the 40 for a first down. And he's fighting it now, every ball that comes to him. Good job on the blitz pickup, too, because Auburn came after people, and they ran the quick slant into Allen. Bobo stays in the pocket. Let's see if he juggles his football. Look at it, look at it. Oh, yeah. Still up in the air, still up in the air. Good job. Deflected off an Auburn defender, and he still was able to possess it. 200 yards of offense in this quarter now for Georgia. 
Three minutes remaining. Seven point Auburn lead. Whistle stopped the play. It was not for a clock violation. They had seven on the play clock when it was snapped. Thrown by the official on the near sideline along the line of scrimmage. Dead ball, false start, offense. Once again, I, you shoot yourself in the foot. You work so hard to get back in the football game, and then you just hand it away. It's, it's got to be very frustrating for Jim Donnan. Well, it is. As he said yesterday, when he was at Marshall, he said, I've always been known as an execution coach. My team didn't make mistakes, didn't commit penalties, didn't turn it over. So this year, it's the exact opposite. I, I'm trying to stop it, and I can't. First and 15. Bobo. Deep down the middle behind Hines Ward. Bad pass. He was open, and the ball was well behind him. That's Bobo's first very bad pass of the day right there. Had Hines Ward open, first down territory, threw it way behind him. You can see the time left, folks. Two minutes, 37 seconds, and second and 15. This is a situation you don't have to get it all back right now. Get seven or eight yards, nine yards. Give yourself a good, makeable third down situation. Second and 15, ball at the Auburn 46. Auburn leads 28-21, Bobo short pass, another pass behind his receiver, Allen. And now it's Bobo a little bit off target, throwing the ball behind his receivers. Third down and 15. One thing I noticed on tape is he has a habit sometimes of throwing off his back foot, anticipating the blitz, because he's been shell-shocked a little bit this year. And sometimes when you throw off that back, well, he steps into it that time. That's that's not it. Falls behind, uncatchable. Third and 15. Four wide receivers, three to the left. Bobo dumps it way off target, looking for Edwards. And now a big decision for Jim Don. And you have all three of your timeouts left of you, Georgia. You could punt it deep. Try to get your defense to stop and use your timeouts and get it back near midfield. Or you go for it and try to get 15 yards. I'll tell you what, I, it's fourth and 15. The, 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 uh, the chances of making fourth and 15 right now are so low, I think, that you punt the ball away based on the scenario you just said, knowing you have three timeouts left and you trust the defense. Now, he's not going to do that, but that's my opinion. Four wide receivers. They come on a blitz. Bobo throws, and it is incomplete through the hands of Allen. And he didn't have first down yardage anyway. If you're going to make that break, you got to make it deeper, because if you get tackled immediately, it's still not a first down. Either way, it's Auburn ball. Four wide receiver set. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Ward is a decoy. You got to get up the field. He's two yards shy of the first down marker. Oh. <laughs> and they didn't even appear to look in the direction of Hines Ward those last few plays. They're big play man all day. Williams bounces it outside. They're nearly stripped of the football. He's very close to a first down at the 44 yard line of Georgia. Halbert went for the football there. Smart play. He started to rip it away. Williams pulled it back in. They may measure for a first down here. 205 remaining. 28. Right there with the left arm trying to pull the football free. That's solid football, folks. He almost got it. Rusty Williams will never play another down at Auburn if he drops it there, though, I guarantee you. Because Tommy Bowden and those offensive coaches, they do not put up with fumbling. Earlier this year, Eric Hines Tucker, one of their backs. Fumble, the big fumble against LSU, and he must be in the witness protection program because he has not been seen or heard from since. Well, Rodney Allison, the running backs coach, said, you know, you can do a lot of things here, but one thing you can't do is fumble the football. It was a first down. Georgia elected not to use its first time out there. Cooper stopped up and dropped the loss, and now the first time out will be used with 137 remaining. Brandon Talbert made the play from his outside linebacker position. So it'll be second down and 12. Two timeouts left for Georgia. Auburn leads by seven. Two timeouts left for Jim Donnan. Auburn is three remaining. 
137 left in the fourth quarter. Furious rally by Georgia here in the second half. They've made some great plays to get back into the game, but they've also had a couple of key mistakes that have been costly. Cooper on second and 11, trying to get outside, then tried to get the stiff on the smart, and he did. And Cooper at 5'6", 158, got very close to the first down, down at the 36-yard line, two yards shy, and Georgia uses its second timeout. Cooper runs a little tougher than you would think for his size at 150 pounds. They pull both guards. Here comes the cut. Now watch the right arm go out on Kirby Smart. You can't touch that. Get away from me. Boy, I wouldn't want to be Kirby Smart sitting in the film room watching <laughs> oh. myself get stiff-armed by a guy 150 pounds. No, he's and discarded. He's, the fellow's going to get all over him in the film room. Marquise Cooper. Got him about two yards short of a first down. He's up to 70 yards rushing. And it comes down to a very big play now. Georgia has to stop because with one timeout left and the clock under a minute and a half, if they don't, the ball game is for all intents and purposes over. Be interesting to see how many people Joe Kine, the defensive coordinator, puts up in the box here. Third and the long two, almost three. the eye formation. It's Cooper dropped for a loss. Back of the 38-yard line, Georgia uses its last time out. Now you would think it is too long a distance to go for for the first down of your Terry Bowden. Right. So you got to punt it in the corner, make them go the length of the field with very little time. If you're the coach of the Auburn Tigers, one would suspect it falls on the 37-yard line, so if you, if you try a field goal, it's 54 yards, and that's way too much right now into the wind. So the question is, do you go for it, or do you punt it away? I, you know. You have to I, punt. I would, I would punt the football. And then the second question is, if you're Georgia, do you, do you try and block the punt, take the chance, because if you don't, you're going to have 80 to 90 yards to go to score the winning touchdown. Jared Holmes has had one punt blocked this year. Some confusion on the Georgia sideline as to the personnel. Yeah, they've got to be careful here. They're going to go and see, they've got a safe punt situation. Well, McCraney, the deep man, isn't very deep right now. He's only on the 20-yard line. See, if you put 10 guys up on the line of scrimmage, Auburn can check into a fake right here very easily. So they're going to go safe punt return. And Holmes does punt it. Up into the wind. That's it. A good break with Georgia. Good bounce for the dogs. Tigers stay away from it long enough to let the officials blow the whistle on the 18-yard line. 107 left. Georgia down by seven without any timeouts. They have to go 82 yards for any chance of pulling this one out. A loss and Georgia would be eliminated from bowl consideration. A win keeps Auburn in position to share the SEC West title with their big game with Alabama next week. Bobo throws too high. Intended for Daniels. Mike Bobo has not made good throws lately. Yeah, the last two series, he's been erratic, throwing behind people that time over Daniels' head. And with this amount of time left, you can't afford, you don't have any, any margin for error at this point. You've got to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Four wide receivers on the field. Bobo with time. Throws caught by Hines Ward. Inbounds, but they'll stop the clock to move the chains. Forward progress out to the 33-yard line. Jason Bray made the hit. But the clock will run as soon as they get the chain set. 53 seconds remaining. Ward does a nice job running Bray off and then coming back to the football. Just a deep comeback route, turns Bray's hips, waits for the football, but it stayed in bounds. So you got to hurry up. Block running, 50 seconds left. 
Bobo under pressure. Throws short. Edwards needs to get to the sideline and does at the 41. A gain of eight. Clock stopped. 43 seconds left. Leonardo Carson was pressuring Bobo from the backside. Bobo, some credit, even though he's been a little bit inaccurate the last two series, he has hung in there, taken some tough shots, and made some plays. This has been a gritty effort by Mike Bobo today. Well, a spirited comeback by a Georgia team coming in off two disheartening losses. Four wide receivers. Edwards stayed in the block. Pass is caught. At the 50th first down, Matt Dixon, just his third catch of the year. He's a walk-on. Clock stop with 38 seconds left to move the chains. They're right on the 50-yard line, first and 10. Got to get down the field. Clock running. Bobo cannot afford to take a sack. Throws first down. They'll stop the clock again. Corey Allen held on to that one at the 38. They're moving up the field, but they're running out of time. You've got to get another 15-yard, 20-yard completion so you can take some realistic shots at the end zone at the end of the game. Chain set. Clock runs. Auburn leads by seven. No timeouts for Georgia. Bobo to the sideline. That is inbounds and then out of bounds goes Ward to stop the clock first down at the 22 and Dan Evans the defensive back slips on the cut and what's going to happen Hines Ward Mr. Everything clearly inbounds John I don't know about you but that's one of the best performances I've seen by anybody in college football this year nine catches 175 yards for Ward Bobo now 17 out of 32 off the bench for 293 passing. Now they can throw it in the end zone. Bobo cannot take a sack and does. Back at the 35-yard line. A fatal mistake. Sean, he didn't get much help, but you're 100% correct. In that situation, you got to throw the ball in the fifth row. It stops the clock, and you get they, an opportunity to try again. Fans boo because they did stop the clock to set the football down at the 31. Gave them the chance to spike it, and now they'll have one shot at the end zone with one second left. <laughs> the clock was running for quite a while. Then the officials stopped it with six seconds left to put the ball down at the 31. That gave them time to line up. They were looking like they thought the game was over. They weren't even hurrying back to line up for the spike. He saw Brian Smith. We had a quick shot of the backup quarterback on the sideline giving the motion to down the football. So like you said, Sean, the ball's on the 30-yard line. Auburn's going to line up a bunch of people back across the end zone. One shot. One second left. Down to the final play. Bobo throws it toward the end zone. It is caught at the goal line. Corey Allen made up for those two drop passes earlier. Unless he pushed off in the end zone, the answer is yes. Yep, yep. Bobby Bowden said the climb. Interference, defense, touchdown. <laughs> Corey Allen, who had a couple of big drops here in the fourth quarter, now puts his name in the history books in the 104 year. Ledger of this great rivalry. I don't understand how he gets an isolation one. They put trips to the field and left him by himself, but there still has to be help over there with him. You can't have a one-on-one -on -one in that situation. And when they recount the great games in this 100-meeting rivalry, they'll talk about game number 100 and the clock that stopped for a moment with six seconds to keep Georgia alive. Now they need the extra point to force overtime. It's Hap Hines, the son of the Supreme Court judge in the state of Georgia who talked about not feeling pressure because his dad experiences so much pressure in his job. I think Hap probably feels it now. <laughs> the freshman from Marietta trying to send it in overtime. No time on the clock. It is good.
We've got two wide receivers down at the bottom of the screen. Corey Allen is going to make the break to the corner of the end zone. The contact on the end zone with Jason Bray, but he's big enough and strong enough to isolate himself against Bray. That, watch the catch. Wow. And now he's going to stretch into the end zone. And that's a touchdown, folks. Heading for overtime, Georgia won the toss. Interesting decisions there for Jim Donnan. It really was. Remember, number one, he wins the toss, so he decides to go on defense. Number two, they have the pass interference penalty. So do you take the ball on the 12 and a half yard line or put Auburn back to the 40? I think he made the right decision. Takes Auburn back to the 40, makes it more difficult for them to score. When Georgia gets the ball, the ball will be on the 25 yard line. But Auburn has to go 40. Craig tripped up as he tried to run out of the pocket. Tripped up by Derek Bird, the junior number 91, who's battled back from all kinds of knee problems over his Georgia career. He's had knee surgery on each knee. He's only played in two games in each of the last two seasons because of those problems, but he has stuck with it. And is playing in one of the great games in the history of this Georgia-Auburn rivalry. No gain, second and ten. Four-man rush. Craig going deep. Has a man. Goodson. And it is incomplete. Broken up by Alanda Sims, the strong safety, number 22. Trying to get the ball to Goodson on the post. The safety was late getting over. And the ball goes right through his hands. I'm not sure if Sims ever got a piece of it. No. Ball went right through his hands. Sims did a good job turning back to the ball as well. Boy, the face guarding fan boot. I think that's what they were looking for. Third down and ten. Huge play. And it is batted down, deflected at the line of scrimmage by Jermaine Smith. And what will Terry Bowden do on fourth down and ten? They don't score or they don't get a first down. The ball goes over to Georgia, and any sort of Georgia score would result in a victory. Yeah, he's just going to keep playing. I mean, fourth down at this point doesn't matter. You take these rules, take the punt game out of overtime. He had the kicker, Holmes, next to him, which is why I raised the question. His number 19 started to trot on the field. I thought maybe he's going to try a 57-yard field goal with the win. They're going to use their timeout right here to figure out what they're going to do. Yeah, the, this, the rules take punting out of overtime. Mm -hmm. Now the only question is, do you go for it in this situation, or do you kick a long field goal, as you said, with the win? Because either way, if you don't make it, it goes back to the 25-yard right. line. So the ball's on the 40, 47. It's a 57-yard attempt with some wind behind you. Home long is 50 against University of Alabama Birmingham this year. So it really depends what Bowden wants to do. He's going to try to get the first down on fourth down and 10. Now bear in mind, if they don't get it and don't score, George, if it wanted to, getting the ball on the 25, could conceivably line up and try a field goal on the very first plane. If they kicked it, they'd win. Right. Not saying they do that, but Absolutely. if you're not familiar with overtime, that's an option. Four wide receivers. Craig steps up, going for a lot more than the first down. He's going to the end zone, and it's batted down. And there is a flag in the end zone. They were going for Baker. There was double coverage in the end zone, and there is a flag. But remember the college rules. If it is indeed defensive pass interference, it's not going to go down the one-yard line like it would in the NFL. It's just a 15-yard and first down. Interference, defense, previous spot, 15 yards. But that is still it's huge. a huge mistake. Yeah, I don't know how you make this play. Quentin Davis, the corner. Where's the interference? I'm not sure if I see interference. I think the free safety did a great job coming over the top. And Davis right had his hands on him for a little bit, but Champ Bailey coming over the top makes a great play on the football. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Pass caught. It's Karsten Bailey at the 15. For those of you just joining us, we're in overtime. Georgia and Auburn tied at 28. This is the first possession of overtime. 
Auburn with the football. They had to begin at the 40 instead of the customary 25 in overtime because of a penalty on the last play of regulation. They were looking at fourth down and 10 and threw a ball into the end zone, and Georgia was called for pass interference. And now another first down picked up by Auburn on the keeper by the quarterback, Damian Craig. And we've had many memorable plays, and this will be another. The pass interference call when it looked like Georgia would get the ball in overtime, and all they had to do was score to win. Quentin Davis, number 10, the corner. looked like a little bit of touch on the back, but I didn't really see any kind of pass interference that you can call in that kind of situation. I thought Champ Bailey, the safety, did a great job coming over the top. 13-yard line, first and 10. Craig in the flat, bobbled and dropped by Willie Gauthier. Auburn led 28 to 7 late in the, the second the quarter. Georgia got a touchdown just before the half that made it 28 14. That was a momentum turner as Georgia has controlled the play in the second half. They got a touchdown on the final play of regulation, a 30 yard pass to force the overtime. On second and 10, a blitz. Craig runs away from it. Craig pass running away. Touchdown, Auburn. Sean, it seems like about five hours ago, but in the open of the whole program, we talked about the difference in the game can be Damian Craig because of his running ability, and that's exactly what happened on that play. You can't let him break contain. Jared Holmes for the big extra point. It is good, so Georgia will need seven on the upcoming possession to force another overtime. Shotgun formation. Gets flushed outside, and once again, with the backs turned, nobody even knows Craig's running with the football till it's way too late. Georgia gets the ball now at the 25-yard line. Mike Bobo came off the bench to lead the comeback in regulation. He threw the tying touchdown pass on the last play of regulation to Corey Allen. Play action fake. Bobo in trouble. Bobo hit as he dumps it off. Edwards with some running room. First down inside the 10. Another big play by Bobo. He was hit by Carson just as he dumped it off. First and goal inside the nine yard line. Bobo didn't even start this football game, but he's done a great job. Carson, top of your screen right there. Loses contain. Bobo breaks through, falling down, delivers the football. So we've got a little bit of everything today. With the promise of more to come, it seems. Edwards, the lone back. He gets it on the delay. Running right. Trying to turn the corner. Edwards runs it. Touchdown! And the track beat has begun. First touchdown of the football game for Robert Edwards. His seventh of the season. Hines needs the extra point to force the second overtime. 35-34 Auburn. Kick is good. We head for a second overtime. Jim Donnan is used to this overtime procedure from his time coaching at 1AA Marshall over the last six years. Donnan's version of the counter tray. Here comes Rusty Beatles, number 70, out front. But the good dip and then the break back outside is the key to the play. Watch the dive. That's just a great athlete making a great football play. Backside guard and tackle out front. The good hit, the dip, and the dive for the corner. Wow. Georgia gets the ball first in the second overtime. They handed it off to Hines Ward. And he's out of bounds, perhaps a gain of a half yard, forced out by Brad Ware, the free safety. Unbelievably close, these two teams, through four quarters and one overtime session. Total yards separated by one yard, first downs separated by one 
Auburn 27, Georgia 26, and the score dead even. Second down, nine. Look out, Bobo dumps it off for Edwards. It's a screen, block is out in front. Edwards with some running room, bounces on the hit at the 10. First and goal, Georgia at the seven. Great job by the Georgia offensive line getting out in front of Robert Edwards on the screen. Remember, in college football, they can release down the field. Number 70, Rusty Beatles gets the lead block right there. Now watch the hit. Get your shoulder pad down. He knocks over Martavius Houston. Robert Edwards, you think they got his attention by not starting him today? Indeed, they did. He and Bobo have been terrific. First and goal to seven. Edwards stumbles inside the five. Looked more promising than that for Robert Edwards, but he was tripped up from behind by Marcellus Mostella. Had it not been for that play, that might have been a touchdown for Georgia. You're exactly right, because they had Fleming, the guard, out ahead of the whole thing. He could have danced into the end zone if Mostella doesn't make that play. Bobo's thrown for a career high, 356 yards today. They try the same play. Edwards. Touchdown! That time they did not trip him up from behind. He goes in from just inside the five, and Georgia has the lead, and the pressure will be on the Auburn offense when it retakes the field. <laughs> Hap Hines to try the extra point. It is good. Auburn will need seven on the upcoming possession for Georgia as the winner. Counter tray. Edward gets inside the big fellas. Great blocks by both guard and tackle. Auburn must score a touchdown. Blitz on the first play, and it is caught. Crochet inside the five. With the lead, Georgia took a chance. One of the very few blitzes by the Bulldogs today, and the Tigers beat it on the big pass to Crochet. Yeah, he's got a blitz going. I think it's Bailey in the coverage who slips on the cut right there. Champ Bailey slips, doesn't get a chance to make a play on the football, and Gaucher takes it down to the three-yard line. Barry Bottoms Tigers trying to answer very quickly. See, this is just made for fans. I mean, if you're a fan of football and you like fast-paced action, this is like the NBA in the two-minute roll. McLeod and Beasley in the eye. And it is a touchdown. It was easy. Two plays, and Beasley took it in from three yards out. And they still need the extra point to force a third overtime. Sean, most coaches we've talked to have not liked this overtime rule. Remember Steve Spurrier, though, from Florida? He said, hey, what could be more fair? Each team gets the ball the same number of times in overtime. Jared Holmes in a must-make situation. He's missed two this year. That one is perfect. We head for a third overtime. Somebody call Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and tell her she's going to have to wait a while. <laughs> Fred Beasley... Six feet, 220 pounds. Usually a fullback, they're going to put him at tailback in this situation. He's going to get behind Kevin McLeod with a good lead block right there on the linebacker, and it's a touchdown. Push the pile. we got a tie ball game yet again. Watch the fullback on the backer, 45 right, right there. That's, that's the key block. No problem. Fans a little bit winded, but they play on as we head to the third overtime. I'm not sure if she's cold or nervous. Probably a little bit of both. Yeah, I think so. Auburn ball first. Tigers trying to stay alive in the SEC West. Georgia trying to keep its bowl hopes alive. Damian Craig, pressure. And he dumped it off late over the middle looking for Cooper. Covered by Bright. It was Jermaine Smith who put the pressure on Craig. And as the game has progressed, 
Smith has been more and more of a presence up front for Georgia. Yeah, he really has. He started to dominate inside. And Greg Bright has also done a nice job because he's been isolated so often with Lizard. Marquise Cooper at 5'5", 150 pounds. It's an awful lot to ask your linebacker to cover him man-to-man. -man. Second and 10. Four-man rush. Again, very little pressure. Man open. Top first down. Karsten Bailey at the 11-yard line. Tackled by Champ Bailey. 14 yards on the gain and a first down for Auburn. We've talked this whole game about the corners playing soft in zone coverage, and it happens again. Champ Bailey lays off. Craig throws the ball underneath. Karsten Bailey catches it. First down. They could get another first down just inside the two. Quarterback draw. Craig leading through traffic. He's close to another first down. Again tackled by Champ Bailey, the true freshman. That's why Craig is just so dangerous in the red zone situation. And he's dangerous any place on the field, but when you have to play man-to-man -man in that red zone, the defensive backs are turning and running with their people, and all of a sudden, you don't even know the quarterback's tucked it and gone. Defense is looking very tired. He came up just a little bit short of the first down. Second and less than a yard for a first down. A little more than two for the touchdown. They have the first down. Kevin McLeod for the goal line. Short of the end zone will be first and goal. I think you're right. I think both defenses are very, very tired. This has become a track meet. Defensive linemen are tired out. The backers are chasing people all over the field. First and about a foot for a touchdown. Craig lost the football. But he broke the plane of the end zone. They call it a touchdown. He was across the plane of the end zone before he lost the football. Touchdown, Auburn. Wow. <laughs> I've never seen so many different kind of plays in a football game. Look how close the ball is. He's on about the six-inch line. Look at the football. It's over. It's clearly over. No question. Good call that time by the crew of umpires and referees. Extra point is good. And now the burden is on the Georgia offense. They need seven to force a fourth overtime. And they're getting it going here. Louder than it's been all day, and that's saying a bunch. They're trying to set up a screen to Edwards. Edwards. They're trying to strip the ball. He's out of bounds. Impossible to hear the whistles over the deafening roar. They spotted him out back at the 20-yard line five-yard gain when it looked like it was going to be a loss behind the line of scrimmage. Robert Edwards is doing a great job today. Let's see what happens. See if that left foot's okay. Right foot. Let's see. Oh, right there. Right behind number 27. You see the right foot out of bounds. Good call. But Robert Edwards is running so tough today and has not put the football on the ground. Second and six. Edwards has running room outside, has a first down, and has a first down at the nine-yard line. Out of bounds, Spikes has left the game with a concussion. Neal in on the play with Spikes, who's back in the football game, and linebacker left earlier with a concussion. Watch the guard tackle backside on the counter tray, doing a great job here. Same play as the score. There's the first block. Here comes the second block by Beatles. Excellent job by that Georgia offensive line taking advantage of the tired Auburn defense. First and goal to nine. Edwards, huge hole. Cuts it inside. Touchdown. And we're an extra point away from the fourth overtime. 
Oh, it's Dick Tomey of Arizona. I believe it was in the fourth overtime. Fake an extra point. He didn't want to go on any further. So the game needs to end right here. Really I had it win up. or lose on one play. <laughs> I don't think Jim Dunn is going to do that. They lost, yeah. by the way. Yeah, exactly. Hap Hines. It is good. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> Little closer to the upright than he envisioned. Woo. He breathes the big sigh of relief as he looks skyward. Hap pulled that wedge a little bit too quickly, didn't he? But both offensive lines continue to dominate as the defenses get more and more tired. Offset, eye formation, good block on the corner by the fullback. And now Edwards cuts inside. Takeo does not make the tackle. Takeo spikes, and it's a touchdown. Both teams a perfect three for three in scoring touchdowns over the first three overtime periods. So we head to the fourth overtime. It's almost been too clean offensively. You get the sense that somebody's going to make a mistake, fumble, interception. Sooner or later, defense is going to make a play. Two teams have combined for more than 1,000 yards of total offense. That looked like it was going to be a busted play. Instead, it's a big gain for Edwards. Gain of seven, perhaps seven and a half, as he's inside the 18-yard line, tackled by Dan Evans. Second down and two upcoming. Edwards churning, needed to get the 15. He was driven back very close to the 15. Martavius Houston, Marcellus Mostella combining on the tackle. Rare moment for the two sides and the fans to catch their breath. Quarterback sneak. Bobo has the first down. Just needed to reach the 15. He got across the 15. We're in the fourth overtime. Georgia with the ball first here in the fourth overtime. Auburn will get it after this possession by the Bulldogs. Remember, folks, the clock means nothing in overtime. Each team gets an equal number of opportunities to score from the 25-yard line, and thus far, both teams perfect in the initial three overtimes. From just inside the 15, Edwards cuts inside, and Spikes took him down at the six-yard line, a yard shy of the first down. And that was the last man with a chance to tackle Robert Edwards. He was heading for the end zone again. Now Jimmy Donnan's hanging his hat on this counter tray. Look at the backside guard to tackle. That's Ingram and Fleming getting the blocks. Good job by Edwards cutting it up. And Sean, you can tell why Robert Edwards is so highly ranked coming into the season. If he can just hang on to the football, he's got a huge future. Talk that he might leave after this his junior year to head to the NFL draft. But he hasn't had a great season. He's helping his cause with this performance. First down, Georgia, as Edwards carried down to the three, first and goal. Charles Dorsey and Haven Fields made the tackle. Fields, a bag up linebacker, involved in the action here in the fourth OT. Overtime kind of does a number on your, your defensive scoring average, doesn't it? Indeed it does. Statistical nightmare for a defensive coordinator. <laughs> Edwards was limping a little bit as he got up from that last carry. But he remains in the game. First and goal for the three. Edwards takes the handoff. They're trying to strip the ball. Edwards got down to the one. Quinton Reese and Takeo Spikes leading the defense for Auburn. Second and goal from just outside the one. A little confusion that time between all of the backs. I think uh, the fullback, Selma Calloway, expected Edwards to come outside of him instead of break back inside. Well, you hate to remove your hot hand if you're Jim Donovan, but boy, Edwards had a very tough time getting up there. He was lifting after the last play, and in fact, he's coming off the field now. Replaced in the backfield by Torin Kurtzy. Selma Calloway, the fullback. Pitch to Kurtzy. Kurtzy waltzes into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. And they go back on top. 
55-49 with the extra point to come. I mean, the way George is playing right now, this is this is Vince Dooley years and years ago, getting the eye formation, toss sweep, counter trade, just smash mouth power football, and Jimmy Dunn it couldn't be prouder of this group the way they come back, they came back today. Half Hines last PAT at a narrow margin. This one right down the middle. And again, Auburn will need seven points on the next possession to force a fifth overtime. Well, we've talked about Hines Ward as a receiver. We've also talked about him as a runner. Let's see what happens to him as a blocker. Turns around, critical situation. What kind of athlete is he? Cut block right on the corner. Jason Gray goes down, chopping wood. Now Hines Ward cheers for the defense. Tigers need seven points to extend the game to a fifth OT. Craig goes deep, and it is nearly intercepted. That would have been your ball game had Ronald Bailey come up with it. There was obviously a misread between Craig and his intended target. There was not a receiver in the area. Hey, good good got spilled. Yeah, I think he got tripped up here. A little push there. That's a good job by the underneath coverage. That's a nice job by uh, Trey Sipe. Strong safety. No interference. Second and ten. They're coming off the corner. Craig runs away from it. He's inside the 20. Protects the football as he gets to the 18-yard line. Third down and three. Gene Tootle lost contain, and you cannot do that against Damian Craig. If you've got outside contain, you've got to stay outside because Damian Craig will beat you quicker than you even know you can beat He'll say toodaloo. <laughs> Third and three. Craig running away from the Blitzen linebacker. Dumps it short, and now they're down to one last play. They must convert either with a first down or a touchdown, and the game is over on fourth down and three. You know who did a great job is the Auburn transfer on that play, Ramon Cooper. He kept contained on that play, forced them to throw the football away. And a timeout called by Auburn. They need three yards to keep this game alive. They are two for two on fourth down today. We really haven't seen a close call in the overtime to the defense being stopped with the exception of the very first overtime when because of the penalty at the end of regulation, Auburn had to begin at the 40 and they got the big break on the defensive pass interference call in the end zone. Other than that, the offense has been steamrolling the defense for each team. There's Joe Kynes, veteran defensive coordinator, glasses on, middle of his defensive huddle. Hey, his guys really stepped it up in the second half, Sean. Entire defense over there. Kynes a holdover from the previous coaching staff under Ray Goff. Former head coach at Arkansas. He's been around forever. Understands the SEC in and out. Needs one big play. And now he wants a timeout. Saw the personnel that was coming out of the field for Auburn. <laughs> in the background, by the way, you saw Derek Dooley, who is an assistant coach on the squad, and he's the son of Vince Dooley. Derek, a fine receiver at Virginia in his playing days. today from Auburn they have a variety of weapons well if I'm Joe Kynes what I'm saying is Damian Craig is the key guy here fourth and three if they get in the gun watch him on draw or in that little shuffle pass if they're not in gun you still have to keep contain on him watch Damian Craig he's the focal point of this offense 
Well, you're Georgia, you're three and five. One play you make, you win the game. Would you be tempted to come after them here? I mean, even if they score, you they're don't their, go to another overtime. They're in their normal set shotgun now. That's what we heard Coach Pine say. Craig needs the 15. Yeah, no, they don't get there. Georgia wins in four overtimes. Now for Gus Johnson and Mike Mayock, Sean McDonough saying so long from Auburn, Alabama. The final score in four overtimes, Georgia 56, Auburn 49. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.